We're at Coppice Shetland Stud with um, another stallion here. What's he called? This is Coppice Everyman. Okay. Um, he's a um, seven-year-old stallion. He's he only measures 37 and a half, but we find that on the bigger mares he can throw the bigger stock. Okay. And he's got super confirmation, and this um, he's starting to stamp his stock with confirmation, but just with a bit more height. Okay, well let's have a look at his confirmation. His name is Little Ginger. Okay, Little Ginger. Little Ginger. I can see why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to have a think about his confirmation and what makes a, a, you know, a, a good Shetland confirmation. Well, if we sort of basically follow the breed standard, okay. looking at him, um, start at the head, obviously. He's got a nice, short head, broad between the eyes. He's got a big, kind eye and a good, wide nostril. Now, what a lot of people don't understand about Shetlands is that this bone here is actually meant to be quite big. They're not supposed to have dished, cute little Welsh heads. Okay. Know? Because on the islands, when it's very cold, as they breathe in, the air comes into this large nasal cavity here and it gets warmed up slightly before it hits the brain. Okay. So it's a sort of a survival mechanism. So evolution, exactly, that sort of thing. Absolutely. Okay. In the same way that Arabs have very big flared nostrils to let the heat out, with the Shetlands, they need to uh, warm, the, warm the air up a bit before it hits their quite substantial brains. You've got very little ears and they should be nicely pricked and forward, not turning like Arabs. He's got a lovely forelock here, nice bit of hair. When you're showing them, by the way, it's a good idea just to put that forelock in place so that the judge can see the head. Okay. He's got a lovely mane, he's got a double mane, it goes on both sides. In the show ring, you tend to have it combed over to this side, but it is actually desirable, particularly in end tyres because it means that they've got so much hair, they can't keep it all in one place. Oh, so it's desirable to actually have the mane laying on both sides? Yeah, with, with end tyres, that, that's how they like to see them, but what we tend to do in the showing, of course, is bring it all over to this side. I but obviously, if you're on the islands and you're in a forced whatever gale, if you've got a bit of mane on both sides of your neck, it's going to keep you warmer. But I have noticed that he has got a, a very substantial it's head substantial of hair. Head of hair. Is that something that, I mean, we said about it being desirable to have the split mane, but is that quite desirable for the breed in all? It, yes, they, sh they should have a profusion of hair. It wants to be silky and it should be straight. Um, it doesn't want to be coarse. This is about right. Perhaps a bit fluffy at the end. I mean, he's only seven. When he's a bit older, his mane should really come down to his shoulder and beyond. Gosh. You know, he's got, he's got a good laid back shoulder. Okay. Shetlands have certainly used to be criticised for their shoulder um, and possibly some of the pit ponies, because they were bred for draft, were probably more upright in the shoulder because that was the job that they did. But they should have this lovely long shoulder, which then gives them the length of rein, more elegant neck. Uh and this is why they're nice riding ponies. It's, it's really due to the shoulder and that mo the movement that that That's helps right. create. That's right. Then you go into a nice round body. Um, well sprung ribs is what they say in the breed standard and, and it's what creates this sort of little round Shetland shape. You don't want it flat and, and poor looking. Um, we've got a nice long forearm. Big knees, big joints, nice short cannon, good pattern again. The the past the um fetlock, good the patterns don't want to be sloping too much, but they just have to slope enough so you get a bit of a spring in the stride. So they're quite upright, aren't they? Um, in, in that in the front legs generally, or yeah, is that just generally, a... I mean yes, I mean the, the front leg stands nicely under here. There's, there's yeah. no long pattern sort of elegant um uh, daisy cutting, you know, they're, they're designed to, to go across rough ground and, and cope with it. He's got phenomenal knees as well. Yes, he has. <laughs> <isn't> he? <laughs> they're really good, solid knees. I like to think of these like sort of bedsteads. You know. <laughs> no, absolutely. And, 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 I mean, all this is designed for strength, endurance, but not, not certainly not speed, but it's the strength and the sturdiness. Yeah, I mean, they have got a good turn of speed, but the main thing is that, you know, these ponies in the wild have got to They've got to cover all sorts of um, fairly scary ground. You know, they've got to be able to step out over boulders without tripping themselves up um, and uh, through bogs and, and all sorts of terrain. So 
they are actually quite active, but there's, there's never a daisy cutting movement. It's always a very well-rounded, um, you know, pick your feet up and cover the ground. Uh, should have, okay. They should have plenty of heart room, which is essentially a good broad chest. Yep. Obviously, nice and straight. Nice, neat, rounded hooves, not boxy or heart-shaped. Um, moving back a bit to the quarters. On a, on, a, on a male, you'd expect to find it much more short coupled than a mare. Mares tend to be longer in the back because obviously they've got to accommodate a foal. And they have also got, I mean, just quickly look down, amazingly, we were saying about the saddle earlier, about how that's actually very important to fit the Shetland's contours. He's got a very flat back. Yes, flat and broad. That's right. And then it, and it, then it goes into a nice, broad loins and quarters. Absolutely. The tail should be well set on shouldn't be droopy. Well set on and he's uh, just at the top here. This is what they call a, a snow shoot and essentially these hairs, as the snow collects on the pony's back in the wild, it gets to here and then it just slides off. Oh gosh, it's, it's another sort mm. of evolution yeah. it's element. survival um, oh, wow. aspect. Um, obviously a good hind leg, nice second thigh, Good hocks, nice big hocks, and again, obviously the hind feet are a slightly different angle to the front. Yeah. Um, but again, nice uh, chunky um, set locks, pasta, nice little feet. I think they're not. I mean, they're, part of their confirmations, they're really, really strong. Is that, does that come from that time when they were used to carry great weights? Um, no, I think, I think that's, that's inherent in, in the breed character, really. I mean, obviously, if you pick the strongest and breed from the strongest, you will perpetuate the strongest. But even the smaller, lighter bone ponies are very strong, and they're stronger for their size than, say, an equivalent of the Absolutely. They're, they're phenomenally strong. And with that strength of body, there's the strength of character too. Their survivors, you know, they wouldn't have lived on that, those islands all those years if they didn't have the character and uh, the stoicism.